You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hello and welcome to the readings for the 9th of November, which are Ezra 3 and 4, Hosea chapter 6 and Acts 23 and 24. So reading with you now from Ezra and chapter 3 and 4. And when the seventh month was come, the children of Israel were in the cities. The people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of God in Israel, to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And they set the altar upon his bases, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings whereon unto Yahweh, even burnt offerings morning and evening, And they kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required. And afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of the set feasts of Yahweh that were consecrated, and of every one that was willing offered a freewill offering unto Yahweh. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto Yahweh. But the fountain of the temple of Yahweh was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons, and to the carpenters, and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon, and to them of Tyre, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had of King Cyrus of Persia, Cyrus king of Persia. Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua the son of Josedek, and the remnant of their brethren, and the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and (coughs) appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upward, to set forward the work of the house of Yahweh. Then stood Jeshua with the with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah together, to set forward the workmen of the house of God, the sons of Henadad with their sons and their brethren of the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundations of the temple of Yahweh, they set the priests in their apparel with the trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise Yahweh, after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course, in praising and giving thanks unto Yahweh, because he is good, and for his mercy endureth for ever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout, when they praised Yahweh, because the foundation of the house of Yahweh was laid. But many of the priests and Levites, and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, And many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto Yahweh God of Israel, then came they to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azar Haddon, king of Asher, when he brought us up from hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua, and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel, said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto Yahweh, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah, and troubled them in building, and hired counsellors against them to frustrate their purpose, all the days of Cyrus king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius king of Persia. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And in the days of Artaxerxes wrote 
Bishlam, Myth, Redurth, Tabil, and the rest of their companions, and to Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue, and it interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rehum the chancellor and Shimshai the scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, king in this sort. Then wrote Reham the chancellor, and Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the Dianites, the Aphasathites, the Tarphalites, the Arphasites, the Archivites, the Babylonians, the Susankites, the Dehavites, and the Elamites, and the rest of the nations who worshipped the great and noble Asnapper, brought over, and set in the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side river, and at such a time. This letter is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king, thy servants, thy servants, the men of this side of the river, and at such a time. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. Be it known now unto the king, that if this city be builded, and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom, and so shall that endamage the revenue of the kings. Now because we have main maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king dishonoured, therefore have we sent and certified the king. The search may be in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of records, and know that this city is a rebellious city, and a hurtful and hurtful unto the kings and provinces, and that they have removed they have moved sedition, for which cause was this city destroyed. We certify the king that if this city be builded again, and the walls thereof set up by this means, thou shalt have no portion on this side of the river. And then said the king, an answer unto Rehum, and to the chancellor, and to Shimshai the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwelt in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river. Peace, and such a time. The letter which ye have sent unto her hath, hath been plainly read before me. And I commanded, and a search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition hath been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all the countries beyond the river, and toll and tribute and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now a commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded, until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye should fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? Now when the copy of the king Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shishai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews, and made them to cease by force and power. Then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem, so it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius king of Persia. Reading with you now from the prophecy of Hosea and chapter 6. Come, and let us return unto Yahweh, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, in the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on, if we follow on to know Yahweh, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain also unto the earth. O Ephraim! What shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as the morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant, there have they dwelt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity, and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. 
There is the whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he hath set an harvest for thee, when I return the captivity of my people. Reading with you from Acts and chapters 23 and 24. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto them, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that one part was Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and the resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together, and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. Then came the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captains that he bring him down unto you tomorrow as though you would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain, and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him, and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand, and went with him aside privately, and asked him, What is this thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire something of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait of him more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath, that they will not eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart, and charged him, See that thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things unto me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred, at the third hour of the night and provide them with beasts so that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner. Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but having nothing laid on his charge worthy of death nor of bonds. And when it was told me how the Jews laid in wait for the man, I, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left 
the horsemen to go with him and return to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea, delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was, and when he understood he was of Cilicia, I will hear thee, he said, when thine accusers are come, and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. And after five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders, and certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, See that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and have done, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always, in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee. I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examination of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things wherefore we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, Forasmuch as I know that thou hast been many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully to answer for myself. Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Neither can they prove the things wherefore they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing in all the things which are written in the law and in the prophets. And I have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there should be resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself, to have always a conscience void of offence toward God and toward men. Now after many years I come to bring alms to my nation and offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, <coughs> who ought to have been here before thee, an object if they had aught against me. Or else let these same here say, if they had found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council. Except it be for this one voice that I cried, standing in among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred to him and said, When Lysias the chief captain shall come down, I will know the utmost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent Paul. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned in righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul that he might loose him. Wherefore he sent him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years came Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul back. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, 
Most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at btf at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.